I see it, I'm just a pretty much normal kind of person, um, passionate about making a real big difference in the world, um, and just dedicated to get involved into politics, and just want to be a good person and make people proud of me. Um, it's about probably about a year ago I started started thinking deeply about um, the system, government, um, and how that affects people. Uh, and then I just started to look through the different political parties. I uh, found uh, the Green Party's policy website, policy.greenparty.org.uk. I had a look on there and it, it made perfect sense to me. It was like reading through a list of solutions about how to fix the problems that exist today. Um, and I just thought, that's, this, these are the kind of people, whoever wrote it, you know, um, which is the members, the members make the policy at the Green Party. I thought I'm going to get along with these people because it sounds like I've written it myself. Um, so yeah, I contacted the Green Party and became a member. Uh, well basically um, when I moved to Erdington I found out that there, was, there wasn't there was a Green candidate and I was desperate to vote Green. Uh, so I contacted the party and and I asked them if there would be someone standing and they said they were looking for a female candidate because they have to fill a quota, 50-50, um, so it's an equal representation of man and female. Um, and I said, well, if, if you don't get a female coming forward, uh, would you consider me? And they said, of course they would. Um, well, first I need to send like, a cover letter and a CV, like applying for a job. Um, and I sent that off and they were, they were happy with what they read. And um, when they found out that there was no female candidate running, they put me forward and then the members voted for me to be the candidate. Well, I'm 29, I'm currently unemployed. I'm trying to get this job as an MP. I'm putting all my time into that, I'm trying to learn about politics, current affairs, and the Green Party, the policies in depth, so that I can. I can transfer that to the public and tell them exactly what we stand for. Well, yeah, recently, um, just under a year ago, I moved to Erdington um, in a shared house, uh, had a six month contract, um, and I became unemployed whilst I was there. So I had to seek housing benefits. Uh, and in doing so, um, apparently, according to the, the landlord, I breached the contract, which I didn't, um, but he asked me to to move out, basically, we're not going to renew your contract. I didn't want to go through all the, the legal process of the courts and everything, especially at this time, I'm running for, for, for MP. Um, so I just, I just got on with my life and I was homeless then, and I approached the YMCA in Erdington, and they helped me find a place in the city centre here. Well, literally, it was, that was where I, I lived that, at the time, and there was no green candidate, so I, I put my name forward because I wanted to vote green. I wanted everybody else to vote green, or to at least give them the chance to anyway. Um, so that was my that was my decision making. Um, it would probably would have been wherever I was living anyway because I want to help the direct community. And if I am elected as MP for Erdington, I will move back to Erdington so that people have got constant access to me. Because um, I think that's the way that MPs should should behave anyway. They should be in the area all the time, should live in the area, uh, should be a, in a position where everybody can contact them. Because at the end of the day, they represent the people that live in the constituency. And if they're always down in Westminster or they live in Scotland or live wherever else, you know, you can't actually physically get to them so that they can literally do whatever they want. But I want, I want to be held to account. For, for the things that I do in, in Westminster and, and so that, that's why I want to move back to Erdington so if I, I literally I can't get away with, with being corrupt or anything I want people to be in direct contact with me and hold me to account for everything that I do. I, I'm, I'm, I am running for, uh, as a councillor for King Standing as well so uh, people in King Standing can, to, can elect me as a councillor there but ideally I'd like to be uh, an MP because I think that, that that's, where, that's where I want to be. I want to be, I want to be in Parliament, I want to be in Westminster, um, di directly, um, directly confronting people like David Cameron, 
um, Ian Duncan Smith, you know, these people that, that have got really privileged lives and seem to be inflicting some of the most horrendous things on the public. I want to be able to go to them and say, listen, this isn't right, what we're doing here. There's a different way to do things. And surely if, if, the, if you put David Cameron in the position of a lot of people that have been sanctioned recently and um, people suffering from fuel poverty, he'd realise how bad the, the country is at the moment for poor people. Um, well, because like you say, I've never done it before, I've got nothing to compare it to, so it's all very exciting to me at the moment. Um, none of it's really daunting, I'm looking forward to doing the hustings and, and being in a debate with the other candidates and talking to the public. I think mostly because I'm, gonna, I, I'm an honest person, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I say what, what comes into my mind. I'm not scared of, of being questioned about things, I'm not scared of the responsibility. It's something that I'm determined to do with my life, so all these things are little steps towards um, being really important within politics. Well, that's, that's the thing, that is pretty, pretty difficult, the whole financial side of things, because it's quite expensive to run as a candidate, and it's quite expensive to run a political party full stop. Um, but yeah, like I say, I've been, I've been doing busking to, to try and raise the money, uh, earning £30 here and there to buy leaflets and, and whatnot. Um, I've recently done a crowdfunding um, fundraiser on the internet through, uh, through, through crowdfunding.co.uk and uh, literally I raised £140 which was my target, I set a very low target because I wanted the money straight away, I set a really low target and I raised it within about an hour, so you know there's, there's a lot of people that are willing to help me out, but I'm, I'm the kind of person I don't like asking for help, I like to tackle everything on my own. Um, uh, because I think it's, 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 that's what life's about. Life's about doing things on your own and, and trying to battle them through. Uh, so I don't really like asking for help and I don't really like asking for donations, hence why I haven't done much fundraising, apart from me busking, because it's like, it's a trade-off busking. I, I, I can entertain people and if they've got enough money, people can throw me a bit of change. And that's how I like to do it, rather than saying, can you give me money? Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. it, notoriously, and especially in America, the political party that spends the most money wins. Um, I think it's slightly different over here. Um, but yeah, there is that aspect. I'm hoping that times have changed somewhat. And with the, with the blowing up of social media and being playing such a big part in politics right now, that that's going to help the poorer parties or the parties that haven't got much funding. Because it's... Um, there's power in, in there's power in, in people's voices more so than money. You can you can pay to have an advert or you can pay to have a billboard and it might fall flat on its face. Um, but people actually saying that I'm going to vote green, I'm going out to vote green. That's a big advertisement in itself. And we've got a massive following on Facebook and Twitter. And there's so many amongst the negative comments. There's so many positive comments about the Green Party that it, if, if and when people read those comments. That they'll they'll probably be interested in the party as well. So I think that it's not just money that's important; it's actually people being vocal that's really important. Well, I've done all sorts of different work. I like I like experiencing loads of different things, so that if anything ever comes up in my life, I can say, "Oh, I've done that before. I can help you." Um, so I've worked in offices, worked as a lifeguard, a sports coach, charity worker, I've done a bit of modelling, I've worked in numerous bars and pubs, um, uh, yeah, just loads of different things. Well, I'd, say, I'd say they've affected me quite deeply, obviously I haven't got any ulterior life to compare it to. Um, but I believe that there's, there's some of the, tra the, the traumatic things that have happened in my life. My parents getting divorced when I was two and, and having, a, uh, having a rocky upbringing, scratching around for 60p to buy a bag of chips between the four of us, me and my two sisters. You know, it was always pretty difficult, but it's, it kind of like, um, it gave me the opportunity to think and compare my life to other people that are more privileged. And um, I want to I wanna see uh, a society where everybody's looked after, everybody's got opportunities and there isn't this massive gap 
between the privileged and the underprivileged. Twice, I've been homeless twice now. Um, that, that's made me grow to be honest. It has made me grow, I have benefited from being homeless, but there's far, there's far too many people out there that, are, that experience homelessness that don't make it out on the other side. And it's not just their physical appearance, it's not just their physical appearance that's damaged, it's the internal, it's the, it's the mental damage that being homeless can do to a person. I see, in my time while I was homeless, I, I met loads of people that were suffering from depression, anxious all the time, in, felt insecure, and feeling really negative and, and almost sort of giving up on life. And that really upsets me. I mean, I, I made it through the other side, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but there's a, lot, there's a lot more people that, that just give up, and it's so saddening, so upsetting. Um, I suppose it does, but it's, my, it's, my, it's who I am, I think, that's going to that's gonna help people. Because I care, I'm, I really, really care about people. I care about changing the system. Um, and I think yeah, having the background that I've had it's probably shaped me into the person that I am. If I'd gone to private school, if I was really wealthy, I probably wouldn't have had to think, had to consider my situation and compare it to others. So I think yeah, my background is going to help me um, stand out um, and, and be the, like, the people's option. Um, well, in 2010, I, I was sort of swaying towards the Liberal Democrats uh, for, for a few different reasons, for the tuition fees, um, for the, the reform in the drug policy into something a bit more sensible than what it is now, um, and electoral reform. Those three things were really, really important. Um, but there were, there were other things that I just studied. Didn't, I didn't think it would make a difference to one vote. Um, I just thought, no, I'm not, I'm not going to vote. So um, I decided not to, and since then, since then, I've you know we've learned the Liberal Democrats reneged on all three of those things. There was no change, no reform to the drug policy. There was a yeah, reversal uh, on the tuition fees. They actually hiked them up to nine thousand pounds, which is absolutely horrendous. And um, the electoral reform, that completely no, no change whatsoever. Um, there was there was a referendum on an alternative vote, but it, it never nothing ever came of it. And we desperately need to change our electoral system in this country. We need a more proportional representation uh, system. Why do we think I'm a better candidate? Well, I don't really know them that well, but being of, of the Green Party, I think we're the best party anyway. Um, I suppose every, part, every party is going to say that. But the reason why I say that is because the policies are made exclusively by the people, the, the members that go and they put forward different ideas and then people debate about it and then decide democratically if it's going to be made into a policy or not. And I think that's the future of politics. I think that's the future of politics where people, all citizens, can put forward amendments to government policy and, ha and have a direct influence over government policy. I think that's the future of politics and that's what exists in the Green Party. So if we can elect a Green Party government and you, you become a member of the Green Party, you can directly affect government legislation and that is something that we've never had in this country. Uh, Jack. Look, I don't really know Jack that well, but I know that he's, stere he's like a stereotype. He's 66 year old, years old, went to private school. Um, his wife's an MP as well, so they both take home roughly about £140,000 a year, just salary alone. I don't think they know what it's like to live in the real world. Um, having so much money, having so much privilege, I don't think they would make too much of an effort in changing things for people below them. So I think we need to see in Parliament, we need to see a lot more, a lot more diversity, a lot more people from poor backgrounds, disadvantaged backgrounds, uh, more disabled people, just more, more difference, more diversity, so that we can get an actual rep representation, a direct representation of the population in the whole, rather than it being full of these ageing, white, middle-aged men that are wealthy, 
um, and that a lot of us feel that they don't do enough to help the people below them. If I do what next? If I do win, I'll move back to Erdington, uh, set up a democracy shop or a democracy office where people can come in uh, daily and contact me with um, ideas to change Erdington, to make it better, to improve it. Um, part of that, what I'm going to do is uh, donate 10 to 20 percent of my salary, my MP salary, back to the community through a new initiative that I'm going to set up called the Erdington People's Budget. And what this this budget is going to be completely inclusive and democratic, where any any constituent can donate any money at any time, if and when they can afford it. And they, what, what all constituents will do as well is they'll be given an opportunity to put forward ideas of how to spend the budget. That could be a tiny idea like, oh, we want a new vegan fast food shop or, or we want um, uh, an allotment space where all the constituents can go and grow food and then take it as and when they need for free. Community-based projects that the, I want the constituents to decide democratically by voting for their favourite one. Plan if I don't win, go to Ibiza for the summer, take my guitar, enjoy life out there for a bit and then come back and face the world here again. Um, ideally I'd like to finish first or second in this election so that I've got a good, um, a good standing, a good starting point for the 2020 elections where I think we'll, we'll win anyway, the Green Party, so that's why I honestly believe that.